Welcome to Digital Oil and Gas with Jeffrey Can. I'm Jeffrey. Digital Oil and Gas looks at the impact of digital technology on the global oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Can on Twitter or at jeffreycan.com. This podcast is entitled Digital Track and Trace Comes to Pipelines. Sometimes it takes a shock to a system to accelerate a change that's already underway. Such a shock brought the concept of track and trace to the infrastructure sector, and we should all be grateful. When disasters happen. When bad things happen, inquiries are conducted and changes are announced. It happens in aerospace, look at the Boeing Max situation, the nuclear industry, the Fukushima Daiichi meltdown, and the cruise ship sector the sinking of the Titanic, and it happens in the oil and gas industry, who face the occasional mishap that goes on to trigger some positive change. For example, the Lac-Megantic disaster caused a change in rail car standards. On July 6, 2013, while the town of Lac-Megantic slept, an unattended fuel train at the top of a hill outside of the town slipped its brakes and derailed in the center of the town. Several tankers carrying highly volatile crude oil exploded, igniting an inferno and killing 47 people. Two years later, the U.S. Federal Railroad Administration and Transport Canada jointly endorsed the new DOT-117 standard rail car and announced a phasing out of the older DOT-11 standard car by 2025. The pipeline sector came under intense scrutiny following a series of incidents that happened in a relatively short space of time. The transformation started in July 2010, when a 40-foot segment of pipe in Enbridge's Line 6B ruptured, spilling diluted bitumen into Talmadge Creek and on into the Kalamazoo River in Michigan. A million gallons of oil eventually bespoiled a 25-mile stretch of the river, causing over a billion dollars in recovery costs. Naturally, hard questions are asked. Why this segment of pipe? Was it the pipe itself or the welding done on the pipe? Where did this pipe originate? What was its composition? Who inspected it? Are there similar segments of pipe also on the line? And what is their condition? Two months later, in September, a gas pipeline operated by Pacific Gas and Electric ruptured in a massive fireball in San Bruno near San Francisco. This conflagration killed eight and leveled 35 houses. More hard questions followed. A few months later, in April 2011, Plains Midstream experienced a pipeline rupture on its 44-year-old rainbow system near Little Buffalo, Alberta. This was a much smaller leak, but still ranked as the largest spill in Alberta's history. Regulators on both sides of the Canada-U.S. border were stunned to learn that the pipeline companies were unable to quickly respond to their questions. 35% of companies could not say definitively which pipes were were installed where, which mill manufactured the pipe, who welded them together, the conditions at installation, or the history of inspections. The conditions of the pipes were unknown. For an industry that prides itself on operations excellence and whose brands depend on reliability, this was a huge wake-up call. Whatever mechanisms were in place to track pipe were not meeting the requirement. Something had to be done. The regulators wasted no time in advancing the rules. The Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, or PHMSA, in the U.S., and the Canadian Energy Regulator, or CER, published their new rule books. In the U.S., FIMSA Rules 192.67 requires pipeline material property records be complete and accurate. In Canada, CSA Z662 is comprised of over 500 pages of prescriptive and performance-based requirements and covers the technical aspects of design, construction, operations, maintenance, deactivation, and abandonment of oil and gas industry pipeline systems. The biggest change to the code is that material records, i.e., Pipe segments, welds, and other equipment must be traceable, verifiable, complete, and accurate. Or, in lay terms, pipeline owners need to be able to show the full life cycle of an individual 40-foot segment of pipe 
from source to location to condition to disposal. Track and trace comes to pipelines. Well, here's the problem. Tracking is not the same thing as tracing, as we are learning in the pandemic. Tracking means knowing where something is. Tracing means knowing who or what you are, where you have been, what you've been doing, and where you are presently. Tracing is much harder, needs a lot more data to do, but, done well, yields a lot more useful insight. Particularly for the pipeline industry, track and trace is a profoundly difficult problem to solve. First, consider vast scale. According to Natural Resources Canada, NRCAN, Canada has 840,000 kilometers of pipeline. Pipe is sold in various lengths, but a common length is 40 foot, or 12.2 meters. There are 82 segments of 40 foot long or 12.2 meter pipe per kilometer, yielding some 68 million segments overall. There are at least 68 million welds holding these pipes together. And the U.S. has at least 10 times as much pipeline as Canada. Next is the diverse locations. Most land pipelines are buried a few feet underground so as to keep them from interfering with animal migrations or inadvertent damage by falling trees or fires. Inspecting them poses its own challenge. Much pipe was installed before the invention of modern GPS systems and are tough to precisely locate. Older paper maps are on paper and may not be up to date. Undersea pipelines are exactly that, on sea floors and hard to access. And of course, their long life. Pipelines can work reliably for decades. Enbridge's Line 3, which is currently being replaced, was first built in the 1960s. Over time, segments of pipelines will be replaced, expanded, shut down, converted from transporting liquids to gas, and back. And of course, there is the complex terrain. Pipelines cross the full gamut of terrain, from low valleys to high mountain passes, under rivers and lakes, through built-up areas and across seabeds. Pipelines need to be built to withstand all that Mother Nature can conjure, from floods to fires to earthquakes. And of course, there's supplier complexity. Hundreds of suppliers of tubular products from all around the world vie for business. Steel is the main ingredient, and much steel making is now in Asia. There are no universally accepted or fixed ways to characterize pipe products. Hundreds more companies move pipe, install pipe, weld pipe. The certifications of individual welders suddenly becomes important. And of course, product complexity. Not all pipe is the same. Pipe is sold in many different diameters and wall thickness with different metals and different coatings. Each segment of pipeline is actually characterized by its condition. How much have inside walls eroded over time? Has the steel corroded? How are the welds holding up? Have the metal walls suffered from stress, fatigue, or microfractures? What about the prepared bed on which the pipeline rests? And finally, there's the complexity of the data sources. The data about new linear infrastructure originates in many different systems with many different layouts, taxonomies, and terminologies. Often, the pipeline purchase contracts are silent on when the data should arrive, the format the data should take, and what the data should include. Frequently, it arrives all at once, creating a huge burden to sift through the records. But fixing the problem actually unlocks a lot of value for the pipeline sector. One midstream company estimated that as much as 600 hours of people time is spent to prepare and manage the data associated with every $1 million of capital spend. Those are not cheap hours. An external consulting engineering rate of $150 an hour is not unreasonable, or $90,000, or about 9%. That time slows down projects, causes delays, and inflates costs for projects. Better quality data about pipeline infrastructure will trim that cost budget. Many pipelines register significant amounts of waste and delays associated with the importing and handling of tubular products. This is all costed into the pipe budget. A few years ago, an oil sands executive confided in me his immense pride at completing a major upgraded site and having only $60 million in leftover pipe. A few years ago, I ran a discovery workshop with a leading pipeline company who was trying to understand why some capital projects transitioned quickly and gracefully into operations, whereas others took months of arduous lifting. 
Much of that pain was traced back to poor quality data about was, what was actually installed where and the reluctance of oper operations to take accountability to operate a new asset that had such uncertainties in the data. The longer the handover, the more delayed the revenue. The better the data and the more confidence operations has in the data, the faster the inspections, the testing, the commissioning, and the approvals. Poor quality data about pipelines now detracts from value. Companies that buy pipelines will discount the value of the pipeline asset by 30 to 40 percent if it is not accompanied by rock-solid data about the installed pipe, its components, and welds. This implies that companies with pipeline assets on their books that are not backed up with quality data are potentially overstating the value of those assets. And finally, I'm reminded how skillful litigators take full advantage of the unprepared in this area. It's not necessary to prove to a jury that a specific piece of data is inaccurate or incomplete. All the litigator needs to do is show that the system for managing data quality is error prone and all of the data can be cast under a shadow. Pipelines that manage to a higher quality will be better able to defend themselves in litigation. But now on to solutions. One solution that gets at the heart of this track and trace problem is Vintry Technologies. Vintry noted the pipeline problems back in 2011 and has been working to crack the code on linear infrastructure track and trace, leveraging digital tools like cloud computing, mobile devices, and modern programming integrations, Vintry can ingest any pipeline origin data from virtually any source and manage it from manufacturing to construction to operations and into whatever backend the pipeline company uses. It's not too hard to imagine track and trace rules coming to many different kinds of assets, including tanks, terminals, and turbines, particularly as the world builds out trillions of dollars in new energy infrastructure. So in conclusion, Track and Trace has come to pipelines, and while it sounds like an onerous burden, clever digital technologies can make Track and Trace pay for itself.